the artists of the first gallery knew that if they were working in Europe, they would have had a chance to paint history or literature or biblical scenes or something that really pushed the, their own um, challenge, their own talents beyond mere portraiture, which was all that, you know, that all that Americans really seemed to want. This is an old story, but one that does define the making of, of art in America. And it really is the invention of the National Academy of Design, the Pennsylvania Academy, auction houses being built. This was the subject of the exhibition we did several years ago, Art in the Empire City. The exhibition system allows artists to paint on spec, if you will, to go beyond what a client would want and to begin to explore the kinds of things that they might like to paint themselves. In these two galleries, the two galleries painted green, we call these stories for the public. Almost every single picture in this exhibition and in these two rooms was shown on exhibition, principally in New York, where artists like George Hale Graham was painting, in, uh, was painting in Missouri, knew that he could send scenes like the great Jolly Flatboatman, send it to New York and see how that would resonate on the East Coast, how a somewhat nostalgic, somewhat you know, vaguely truthful rendition of life on the Missouri River at a time when flatboats were going out of favor in, in, in favor of steam, steam travel and more industrialized um, mercantile work, just how that would play to a New York audience. Um, there are issues This is that we begin to, in this gallery also, when things aren't so privately commissioned, we begin to bump up against some difficult issues. And I'll leave it to you, you can leave it to your own devices to find the issues of, like the point, illiteracy, race, slavery, business, all of these kinds of hard issues, which aren't for the most part represented in the first gallery where people are all about themselves. And there's more of that in the second gallery on this page.